Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Your one and only political analyst, your favorite political analyst, is here with Oliver and I now in the studio. That is Ezekuchi Kudi. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, ladies. Happy New, new week. week. Do you know I was about to say Monday? I completely forgot it's New Week. No, Monday is New Week. Friday is weekend. Yeah, so. there yes. we go. Good to have you, <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies, for having me always. What was the highlights of your weekend? Well, I had events. That is what we always pray for, <laughs> because uh, at this age... More muscle to your husband. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at this age, uh, you should do a lot of things, so that when you get to the age of retirement, you know, like our politicians, if a lot of them had made uh, any considerable impact in their youth, it would be really very hard for you to be jostling for positions when you grow old. Mm. Rather, you should be playing with your grandchildren. Children. <laughs> so as a young man now, I am investing in my future. So that when it gets to that time, when it's time to rest, indeed, I will rest. There we go. Good now, Oliver you. and I just spoke about the fire explosion in Niger State, but we're moving on to another story. And this is actually quite interesting because we do know that NYSC is something that we all discuss 24-7. And I think at the end of this conversation, you're going to be asking yourself which side of the divide you are on. Now, our very own Minister of Finance, that is Kemi Adeoshun, did not participate, according to reports, in mandatory one-year national youth service scheme. In Instead, she forged an exemption certificate many years after graduation, and this is coming through from the reports that we are receiving. Now, the long year service, or rather the year long service, organized by the NYSC, is compulsory for all Nigerians who graduate from universities or equivalent institutions at less than 30 years of age. In addition to being a requirement for government and private sector jobs in Nigeria, the enabling law prescribes punishments for anyone who absconds from the scheme or forges its certificates. Now, listen in very carefully to this. Eligible Nigerians who skip the service are liable to be sentenced to 12 months imprisonment and or a 2,000 naira fine, according to Section 13 of the NYSC law. Section 13.3 of the law also prescribes three-year jail terms or option of 5,000 naira fine for anyone who contravenes provisions of the law as Mrs. Adeoshu has done. Now, Chukudi, I'm going to continue with the report shortly, but I have a question for you. I was going to address it to Olive, but our political analyst is now in the studio. How... Okay... Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm looking at 12 months against 2,000 Naira. <laughs> and I am a bit confused that that is Section 13 of the NYSC law because 12 months imprisonment is way different to paying a 2,000 Naira fine. Very true. I think when we look at um, our laws, the reason why we have to review these laws is so that um, reward or punishment will be commensurate to the action. For example, if you carry out, if you perpetrate a crime, or you carry out an action that is worthy of receiving reward. Most people try to review so that it's commensurate. I recall in the University of Nigeria, you would hear maybe Dim or Dume Gojuku Prize for, for example, maybe literature, and you hear 1,500 naira. Now, these, you know, um, um, provisions as enshrined in that law have not been reviewed for a very long time. That is why you have... 5,000 naira mm. and 12, um, 12 months imprisonment. Now, people can even, the option of fine, people can pay it right there in the court premises and be left off the hook. Now, interestingly, this is a very, very grave um, issue that we must discuss. Now, we credit premium times for exclusive and in depth um, um, investigative journalistic work, and they have come up with this story. Now, we need the Minister for Finance to come out and clear the air. Gone are the days where you arrogantly just dismiss stories. Now, we have a government that we say the man at the helm is a man of integrity. And we need all those that work with this man to be people of what? Integrity. If we have a situation where premium times from your CV that they have obtained say that you claim that you got an exemption letter from NYSC and it is dated 2009, mm. you need to be clear and also explain. But this is not the first time. I recall that at the return to democratic rule in 1999, there was this scandal that shook the entire country. We would still talk about Chicago and the rest of them. We're also going to talk about people who came up with uh, those that did not graduate yeah. and so many other issues like that. The truth is, we need to get to the point where we would be able to check our records and say, no integrity issue whatsoever. We believe in this person's personality and we are convinced that whatever this person says, you know, is A, is A. And not when somebody tells you Merry Christmas, you start checking if it is the Chinese calendar that the person is using or the Gregorian well, calendar. Actually not to actually look, yeah. distract from what we're saying. Now we understand that what she 
has been what has allegedly been done by her is wrong. Let's talk about NYC. Now Absolutely. the argument has been for or against NYC. I have never hidden the fact that I think that at the end of the day, the initial plan of the NYC was to find a way to unite Nigerians after the it was one of the, the remedies, our first aid after the war to ensure that everybody has experiences of what it, it meant to live in other parts. But we're battling security issues now, which brings us back to the question of NYC. How important is it really? Do we still keep the scheme? Does it need to be re reworked on, restructured, or do we scrap it totally? Now, if you go to the founding objective of the NYSC, you would see that whatever we do with the NYSC, if done right, is going to go very far. There are people with no experience of any part of Nigeria because they were born, bred, and buttered in a certain part of the country. But the NYSC has helped correct a lot of stereotypes even though it has also for that fueled, you know, um, negative perceptions also. But the truth is, if we do things right, we're going to get positive results. Look at what we are talking about, the NSAS campaign. Look at what we are talking about in, of the Nigeria police force. We, people have said, you know, you cannot end, you cannot scrap, you can reform. The very reason why we reform is to position in order to be better. If we position the NYC for excellence, then the founding objective of the NYC is one that we are going to attain. But aside from all of those we have a serious case of forgery mm. in our hands. And the punishment are spelled out clearly. Madam Minister, no, 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 Honorable Minister of Finance, can you come out and clear the air and say, okay, I got my, just like what uh, Senator uh, Dino Melaye did, he even wore his matriculation gown to the floor of plenary. Now, what we are saying is, if you claim that you got an exemption letter from the NYC, it's not hard. We can clear the air. I recall when I was in the University of Nigeria, because of an alteration in my registration number, I got, uh, I was summoned. They, don't, they will not even tell you. They check with their records yeah. and they come back to you. You know, but because you know, the way it is done in the bank, you have to sign that there's an alteration. They have to go through that rigorous process. Mm -hmm. So it's not, we don't need to go to Pluto or Mars to get to the root of this matter. I think, I think as well, what many of our viewers may also need to understand is that NYSC do not exempt you if you graduated before the age of 30. True. You're only out, um, going to get exemption if you graduate after the age of 30. The reports coming through from Premium Times state that Mrs. Adeoshun graduated at the age of 22 from the University of East London. So a lot of the report is going on the, on the foundation of how can NYSC exempt you if you graduated at the age of 22. It's not like you graduated at 32. So regardless, like you said, we do have a serious forgery issue here. And we are going to move on to our next story. But just in 30 seconds, what do you think is going to happen now? Well, Nigeria is Nigeria. Uh, if certain people just decide that they are not bothered about the story, it is most likely going to be swept under the carpet. But the truth is, this integrity issue is one that will taint any administration that claims to be one of integrity. And a lot of people will not forget. In fact, the acting rector of the Oshun State Polytechnic was recently dislodged by the, univers uh, by the Polytechnic Authority yeah. because they wrote to the University of Ibadan and they said, we do, not have any, no <laughs> we do not have any idea that this man who claims to have a or to have yeah. the PhD in our institution really did and they had to let him go. We actually will keep our fingers crossed. We'll be expecting to give you updates on what the minister comes out to say in response to this. But aside from this, very quickly, I'd like to mention the fact that we need to look into our NYS structure, our NYS scheme, and more importantly, as we approach 2019 elections, knowing fully well that youth core members have been used fraudulently a couple of times to manipulate election results, as a lot of them have been posted to polling units. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.